It's possible in the case of perhaps the majority of you who told them to give birth here. Well, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made that happen here out of all places. So when Allah created you, he chose so many things for you. And then he told you, right, I want to test you. I want you to, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. And I want to see, will you fulfill it or not? Primarily, he tells you, acknowledge me as your maker. Well, if I acknowledge Allah as my maker, I need to acknowledge that he is your maker as well. And I need to acknowledge that he is the maker of all the other creatures, the animals, the plants, the, the oceans, everything else, even that which is part of nature. It's Allah who created all of that. How will I be able to respect Allah when I have not respected the creation that the same Allah has made? Subhanallah. Something dear to Allah that he created and I have no respect for it. Do you really think I will be able to respect the one who is above all of that who actually made it? So in order to respect Allah, you need to be able to respect the creatures that Allah has created. This is why whenever we speak of worship, we speak of two types of rights. The rights of the Almighty, that he shall be worshipped alone. And we speak of the rights of the rest of the creatures of the Almighty, starting with what is known as Hukukul Ibad, the rights of the rest of humankind. So a person who is not respectful towards animals cannot be respectful towards Allah because he hasn't understood who those animals belong to or what the animals are, who gave those animals the life. If he had understood that, he would have treated them differently. And this is why even for consumption purposes, Muslims are taught that there is a specific way of taking the life away of an animal that you are going to consume. It needs to be humane. You need to treat it fairly. Look at the people across the globe. When it becomes commercialized to a degree of greed, they lose track of the giver of life. They lose track of the Almighty. It becomes such that they want the money by hook or crook. So they treat the chickens terribly. They treat the cows in a very, very inhumane way. They treat the animals in a way that is unacceptable just because they have greed for the money. The Almighty says, you failed your test. Even if you tried to ensure that the animal was halal, you are sinful for the way you treated the animal before its life was taken away. So much of respect is given to animals that the Almighty tells us that you're not allowed to take the life away of an animal while another is watching. This is through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu He says, take them away. Don't cause distress. You take the name of Allah, seek the permission of Allah. There should be a purpose for that life being taken away. For example, poultry, because you'd like to consume, but not destructively. You just go around taking life away because the giver of the life was Allah. The reason why we would say Bismillah is to seek permission of the giver of that life to take that life away for a purpose that is noble. We're talking of the animals. So Allah says, you know what? You might be kind. You might be kind. Before I tell you what Allah has said, I'm giving you an example. You might be kind to a chicken because you know that you're going to consume it. You might be good to a sheep or whatever else. You might be good to, you're kind to, when you have purpose, when it's your pet, when there is a need for it. But what if there is an animal that you have no need of? 